the gingery the milling machine excellent little book well worth it this is my uh, introduction to um, aluminium foundry work and um, creating aluminium components to make this milling machine. I'll uh, start off by saying um, I've never done this kind of work before and uh, it's a new learning curve for me. So first we'll start off with um, the patterns. Patterns are uh, easy to follow in this uh, book. It's quite explanatory. Very very clear on what it says. The only problem I have with it, or we have here in, in Australia, is uh, this book is in Imperial and um, uh, we work in metric. Um, not only work in metric, but our materials are also in metric sizes. So, um, the first problem I came across was um, our stock size of three inch by quarter um, flat bar. This is actually um, um, 75 millimetres, so it's uh, about 1.2 millimetres narrower than um, the three inches specified in the uh, in the book. Um, most measurements aren't a problem. The problem I found with this was that the um, these bed this bedways was supposed to be overhanging the front by uh, seven sixteenths. Well, that um, that measurement's a bit redundant because this is not three inches. It's uh, one point two millimeters less than three inches. There's a contradiction in term. Mill millimeters are metric. Get used to it. Um, here in Australia we, we've been metric for many many years I grew up with Imperial and then part way through my uh, education in school uh, we changed to the metric system but the material stayed Imperial sizing for many years and then what I mean by that was um, uh, an 8 foot by 4 foot sheet of uh, material still remained 8 foot by 4 foot then it went metric, 1,200 by 2,400, and now it's gone back to 1,220 and 2,440. But the bar stock is not a true 3 inch, it is 75 mil. So something to remember when working in these uh, fine sizes is the, uh, is the material stock. But <coughs> I'm working my way around that start off with, I spent a lot of time creating these wooden patterns and um, there's a slight mistake in, in this one and some modifications that, I've, that I uh, uh, carried out on it. First thing is the top of the bed is too large. Um, it was supposed to be 2 and 3 8. I can't remember what I ended up with but I made the base 2 and 3 8 and then tapered it up a couple of degrees for the draft so we ended up with a larger than two and three eight up top so when this was originally cast it was wider across this bed didn't realize that until uh, or how necessary that was until i did go to put the uh, bedways on only to find out i didn't have much overhang front or back so i I took off the material, about um, uh, an eighth of an inch of material, but I hand filed that all off and brought that down to size. So this is a casting I did at my, uh, my son-in-law's workshop and he has a milling machine so I was able to deck this top and bottom and unfortunately we had to come back home again for uh, personal reasons. So I never got to do any further casting and machining. So here at home, the milling machine that I'm building is not built. So I don't have a mill. Everything is performed by file and then 
hand scraping. Interesting and very laborious exercise, but it's getting there. So there's two problems with this cast. One, it is uh, low on material in this corner, but I was able to just pick up a piece of surface there, and it's right with the rest. And the second is, I uh, don't, don't know whether you can see that, but there's a cavity in this corner. Again, something I can work around um, by just not um, putting bolts in there. I'm going to use it. it came, apart from that, it came up beautiful. Now, the change I did to the pattern was I didn't like that um, is asking for a quarter inch or a six mil countersunk bolts to be screwed into these into the webbing. So I made this one here thicker, all four sides. That remained as it was. Put a couple of little half dowels in here. That's where two screws are going. I built up these corners and I put a piece in here to give this more meat <clears throat> just to make me uh, feel a lot better about it but the casting worked out well the uh, the pads the legs are to um, the drawings in the book and um, the only changes I did with these was uh, I built the corners up with quad only because I, uh, I don't work with timber much and I didn't like the fact that um, one nailing into 6mm thick material with a brad gun uh, is very difficult and um, yeah, I didn't trust it. So, I built up these four internal quarters and as we can see, and the same on this one, as we can see, it didn't cause a, a problem. <coughs> I, um, um, both, both pads turned out well. I had to file the, uh, the bases here nice and flat, hand scrape them, and, um, and part of the hand scraping is, uh, is the bluing. Now the, um, the surface plate, I can't afford four or five hundred dollars for a uh, granite surface plate, but um, plate glass is pretty good. It's only about a foul, maybe a foul and a half, um, uh, not flat. It's slightly, slightly dished. Like I say, about a foul, foul and a half, well within what I want it to do. So uh, that actually sits on a granite. Uh, breadboard for the kitchen. That was um, three foul out. Uh, but yeah, the glass is only about a foul out. Well within uh, the specifications of what I want it for anyhow. So uh, yeah, deck the lower parts of the feet. They're both now nice and even. These, this height had to be the same and they were different. So. I had to um, file both <coughs> one of these down, I, I think it was a small one, less material to work with. Uh, I, think I, was, I think I was lucky it was the small one that I uh, had to bring down in height to, um, uh, to meet the other. But they're both, both now uh, at the same height, which, uh, which of course means the bed will sit level to the reference, reference surface of the plate. No wobbling of the base. That's good. Uh, this machine, by the way, was done on a... Um, this is the only piece that was machined by a milling machine. And um, I still had to hand scrape it, amazing enough. Not much. Not much, but still had to hand scrape it. Um, I suspect 
it was because I, um, I, I put bolts in each end and then used the heads of those bolts to clamp that to the milling machine. So uh, it, it may have twisted it, I may have had some um, rubbish underneath the, the deck, I don't think so, but uh, I may have, and that may have given it a slight twist. But with a bit of filing, and um, yes, it's, uh, it's pretty accurate now. Filing, by the way, I found a, um, a body filler file to work really well on the uh, aluminium. So I'm, I'm, uh, that works uh, quicker. Well, it doesn't necessarily work quicker than a, uh, a bastard file, but a standard file clogs up easily with aluminium. Uh, whereas the uh, body file did not clog up. The only, th only thing with the body file is the, uh, the backing, the timber backing has to be perfectly flat because the body file uh, will flex. It's designed to flex to a certain amount. Whereas uh, uh, a, a normal file, uh, well they do, f they do flex but don't flex anywhere near as much. So there we, there we go, we've got um, three castings done. These are all hand filed and hand scraped. And um, yes, I'll, I'll have to show you uh, the, uh, the casting of these parts. But this is the beginning of the Dave Gingery the milling machine. Thanks for your time.